we discuss in this presentation how good strategy for accurate diagnosis of presence or absence of the event of interest have to be developed and tested so that their accuracy becomes known the best test of presence of event of interest is called as the gold standard and it is assumed to have zero false positive and false negative rates that means it makes no mistakes at least we assume it makes no mistakes if the gold standard is costly invasive risky or cannot reach the last man in the queue that is inaccessible then one or many surrogates and combinations may have to be used as a diagnostic strategy for saying whether the event of interest is present or absent in a particular individual so if the surrogate results are used in series then this increases specificity and if they are used in parallel that increases sensitivity and the surrogates have to be quantifiably compared with the gold standard before they are used in the field so this is the diagnostic strategy development for the presence or absence of the event of interest in the units of the population that we are study if surrogates yield numbers and gold standard yield the yes and no then we want to determine the best cut off in the numbers of the surrogates yielded by the surrogates to maximize the sensitivity and specificity of the cut off this can be done by the maximum likelihood approach by trying to maximize the sum of sensitivity and specificity or by a curve which is called as the receiver operator characteristic curve but we do may not want to do this every time sometimes we want more sensitivity and sometimes we want more specificity for example if in covid we don't want to miss a covid because he is going to infect other people that's why we want more sensitivity and in the case of aids we want more specificity because if we say that uh, you have aids we have destroyed the life of that human being so we want to be very very specific now if the surrogate and the gold standard both yield numbers we calibrate by making a x y scatter plot by linear regression we develop a trend line which is closest to all the dots that's why it's also called as the least square line and we report what we have not been able to explain by determining the distance of each square from the trend line squaring them to take off the sign and summing the residual squares lesser the residual squares closer are the dots to the line thirdly if surrogate and gold standard both yield yes or no results we report we make a 2 by 2 table and we report sensitivity specificity positive negative predictive value positive negative likelihood ratios and the positive likelihood ratio is used to diagnose the chance of disease if sur surrogate is positive in a population with different prevalence of disease now the final thing is that clinical validated clinical prediction rules are the best instruments for diagnosis of event of interest in the field because they are safe cost effective highly accessible ways to diagnose the event of interest correctly because in them 
we can get multiple indicators at low cost. Anybody from the population may have 2% chance of tuberculosis, but if we catch him from the hospital, the chance increases. From the chest ward, it further increases. With cough with three months, it further increases. With hemoptysis, it further increases. And if the patient has responded to ATT, then you are almost 100% sure that he has tuberculosis. So since these multiple indicators used in series will increase specificity and sensitivity to very high levels, and they are very easily uh, accessible by good clinicians with comprehensive, valid, and precise data collection and interpretation. Therefore, they are the cl validated clinical prediction rules are the best instruments to be used in the field. This diagnostic test calculator I developed just for you, dear participants. It can give you results needed to publish papers when you are trying to validate or calibrate surrogate in, uh, methods of diagnosis against gold standards. So if the surrogate gives numbers output and the gold standard yes, no, then you have to learn to choose a correct cutoff. Then if the surrogate and gold standard both give yes and no, you have to report sensitivity, specificity, positive, negative, predictive values, and their 95% confidence intervals. And when the surrogate and gold standard both give results in numbers, you have to develop a trend line and use it use it to predict the value of the gold standard given a certain value of the surrogate. And the accuracy is achieved by minimizing the residual square. You know, residual square is the number by which the trend line is close to all of the dots in the scatter plot. So, so you just do control click to open the link and I have shared the link with uh, Archana. She will share it with all the participants. So, here was the calculator and what we will do, we will say control and click this link to open the calculator. So here is the excel file, you are quite familiar with it and we are first of all approaching when the surrogate results yields numbers and the gold standard is yes and no. Example, here are fasting blood sugar levels arranged from lowest to highest cutoffs. Let us say above 60, above 70, above 80, above 90, above 100, 110, 120, like this. And here is whether diabetes is present or absent by HB1AC cutoffs. So in this, you may have to feed in real numbers, how many cases in this cell, then this cell. And at each cutoff, you will have to, for example, if you draw a cutoff between 8 and 9, then true positive is 100. The true negative is sum of 10, 30 to 100. And the false positive is 20. And the false negative is 90 to 20. So at this level, you have de de determined the sensitivity and the specificity. And thus, you determine the sensitivity and specificity at all levels. You add up the sensitivity and specificity, find out where it is the greatest, and that cutoff gives you the minimum false positive and false negative rates. Now, it is not always desirable to have uh, high sensitivity 
or high specificity for example if you say somebody has aids positive you want to be extremely specific and if you miss a covid patient and he infects 10 others then you want to be damn sensitive so sometimes you desire sensitivity in some situations you desire specificity so this is not a hard and fast rule but this is the method to find out where you can maximize the discrimination correct discrimination between people having or not having the event of interest now the second thing is that both the surrogate and gold standard are yes and no data so these are you have to fill in the the correct values between disease positive by surrogate and gold standard that is true positive and this is true false positive this is false negative and this is true negative so the sensitivity is 842 upon 10842 okay specificity sorry sensitivity is 842 upon 1000 specificity is 9000 upon 19000 positive predictive value is 842 upon 10842 and negative predictive value for diseased is 158 over 9158 and for uh, non diseased is 9000 upon 9158 so thus you have these uh, sensitivity specificity positive and negative predictive value and the positive likelihood ratio is 842 upon 1000 divided by 10000 upon 19000 the negative likelihood ratio is 158 upon 1000 and 9000 divided by 19000 so very very simply by this 2 and 2 table you have developed these test characteristics now if you put in the sensitivity here it will automatically take up there then you will develop a 95% confidence intervals of this sensitivity For example, 0.842 is a point estimate, but the interval estimate is from 0.836 to 0.847. That means if you repeat the test, the same study, hundred times, ninety-five times, the value will be between 0.836 and 0.847. So you have both point estimate and interval estimates of. sensitivity specificity positive negative predictive value of the test then we go on to say when both gold standard and surrogate yield numeric data so here is the surrogate data and here is the numeric data then you draw the scatter plot with these multiple dots now these dots would represent value of 4 on the by the surrogate is corresponding to the value of 6 by the gold standard and you would then draw a line which is called as the trend line and this trend line is the prediction the expected value and this is the observed value and observed minus expected is what you could not explain that is the residual residual can be positive residual can be negative and you square the residual to take off the signs then you sum the squares sum the squares and lesser the sum of squares more accurate is your prediction line and you can use the prediction line to uh, for example if we use it here then four value here corresponds to 4.2 here so it's quite a accurate prediction of the result okay much more accurate otherwise the if you go by the dot it would have been 6 point something uh, or uh, i mean 6 but if you use the trend line it is 4.2 
then you can use this equation value of the gold standard is equal to 0.6189 into the value of the surrogate plus 2.3939 so this is how you use this calculator and you can get very good results very very good results uh, to publish in papers or use in decision making.